Have you ever wondered why medieval castles were built the way they were? Castles, those monumental structures of the Middle Ages, were not just homes for nobility, but powerful defensive fortresses, designed to withstand the harshest of sieges. The earliest medieval castles dating back to the 10th and 11th centuries were often of the Mott and Bailey design. This ingenious layout featured a fortified tower or keep perched atop a man-made hill or Mott, surrounded by a protective enclosure, the Bailey. These early bastions were primarily constructed using timber and earth, materials that were readily available and easy to work with. However, while these materials were convenient, they also had their limitations particularly when it came to durability and defence. The timber would rot, and the earthworks could erode, leading to the castle's eventual downfall. As we delve deeper into the Middle Ages, castle structures evolved dramatically, reflecting changes in warfare and society. As we move into the 11th and 12th centuries, a revolution in castle design took place. A seismic shift from wooden to stone structures marked a new era in the architecture of these fortresses. This change would reshape not only the physical appearance of castles, but the very dynamics of medieval warfare and society. The introduction of the stone keep was a game changer. These imposing towers, often placed at the heart of the castle, were a display of power and a refuge in times of siege. The keep's towering presence served as a constant reminder of the Lord's authority, a stone sentinel watching over the landscape. Then came the curtain walls, a ring of stone enveloping the castle, providing an additional layer of defence. These walls, often punctuated with turrets and battlements, were more than just barriers. They were platforms for archers, vantage points for lookouts, and a formidable deterrent for would-be attackers. But what's a castle without its grand entrance? The gatehouse was not just a door to the castle, it was a statement, a symbol of power and prestige. Often the most heavily fortified part of the castle, the gatehouse was a gauntlet to be run, a challenge to any who dared to breach the castle's defences. So why this shift to stone? The answer lies in the need for better protection. Wood, while easier to construct with, was vulnerable to fire and decay. Stone, on the other hand, offered durability and resistance. The influence of the Crusades also played a significant role. As knights and nobles returned from the Holy Land, they brought with them new ideas about fortification, inspiring a wave of castle building across Europe. But the Stone Revolution was not just about defence. It was a statement, a symbol of power and permanence. In a time of flux and uncertainty, these stone behemoths stood as a testament to the might and endurance of those who built them. But as we'll see, the evolution of castle design didn't stop there. Entering the 13th century, castles became more than just homes for nobility. They transformed into formidable fortresses. This age, often referred to as the Age of Fortification, witnessed a shift in castle architecture. Driven by the advancements in siege technologies, a critical innovation of this era was the trebuchet. A powerful siege engine, the trebuchet could hurl large stones and other projectiles over great distances breaching the walls of a castle with terrifying ease. In response to this new threat, castle designs evolved. The era marked the development of concentric castles, a design where multiple layers of defensive walls were constructed around the castle's core. These layers, each taller than the one before, created a formidable obstacle for would-be attackers. It's a classic example of how the development of offensive technologies often spurs advancements in defensive measures. Yet the walls were not the only line of defence. Moats, deep, wide ditches filled with water became a common feature. Not only did they serve as a physical barrier to soldiers and siege engines alike, but they also provided an additional layer of protection against the undermining of castle walls. The age of fortification also saw the improvement of defensive features within the castle itself. Arrow slits, narrow vertical gaps in the walls, allowed archers to shoot at attackers while being shielded from return fire. Murder holes, openings in the ceiling of a gateway or passageway, enabled defenders to drop stones, boiling oil, or other harmful substances onto the enemy below. The evolution of castle design during this era was a testament to the ingenuity and resourcefulness of medieval engineers. They were constantly adapting, improving, and innovating to ensure that their structures could withstand the ever-increasing threats they faced. 
As we approach the end of the Middle Ages, the function and design of castles took another dramatic turn. By the late medieval period, the age of castles as we know them was coming to an end. The sun was setting on the era of towering stone fortresses, their ramparts echoing with the fading sounds of battles past. Why, you may ask? The answer lies in the inexorable progress of technology. The advent of gunpowder and cannons revolutionized warfare, and castles, those once impervious bastions of power, were left vulnerable. Mighty walls that could withstand the onslaught of battering rams and siege engines crumbled under the destructive force of artillery. The castle, a symbol of invincibility, was rendered obsolete overnight. The cost of fortifying these structures to withstand this new mode of attack was exorbitant, leading to a sharp decline in castle construction. The medieval castle, once the heart of military strategy, found itself relegated to the annals of history. But even as their military significance waned, these grand structures left an indelible legacy. They transformed from strategic fortifications into symbols of prestige and power, their towering silhouettes a testament to the ambitions of their creators. Many castles were repurposed, serving as palatial residences, administrative centers, or even prisons. Today, these iconic landmarks stand as silent witnesses to the turbulent past, their weathered stones whispering tales of knights and nobility, battles and bravery. They are more than just architectural marvels, they are time capsules, offering us a glimpse into a bygone era. They inspire awe and wonder, their stark imposing facades a stark contrast to the modern cities that have grown around them. These structures have also found their way into popular culture, serving as the backdrop for countless tales of fantasy and adventure, from the pages of epic novels to the screen of blockbuster films. They have become synonymous with the medieval period, their silhouettes instantly evoking images of knights, kings and epic battles. From their humble beginnings to their formidable heights, the story of medieval castles is a testament to human ingenuity and the relentless march of time. Even as they stand as relics of a bygone era, their legacy continues to shape our world in myriad ways, reminding us that history, like a castle's stone walls, is built one layer at a time.